Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terry and Drinking Series on the Mr. FPJ Nintendo Project. More specifically in this instance, the Nintendo Entertainment System and Famicom Disk System Core. Because about a month ago, I did a video talking about accuracy in cores and what it matters and what it doesn't. And that's because we were using a very specific ROM tester to go through all of the different instruction sets and things that an NES can do, including unsupported instructions that no retail game would ever use. We talked about the fact that the core was testing 124 out of 128, so it wasn't actually 100% quote unquote accurate. We also also talked about the fact that that really didn't fundamentally matter because anything that you would be experienced playing games would be 100% perfect and these were basically just tests that were measuring things that you would never actually see in gameplay or notice unless you measure them and that's basically what that entire video was about what accuracy means and when it is or isn't important as far as Mr. FPJ was concerned everything was always accurate to the gameplay experience so we never really worried about these tests and now we have a brand new core out that's going to do something different with those tests and that is going to be fundamentally both important and completely meaningless at the same time but let me caveat that statement and explain it before you go down into the comments below it is super important that it is now going to test more accurate than it did before that is an incredible achievement the developer that spent the time doing this along with all of the different people helping have done an incredible job and that's definitely something that should be celebrated additionally from a preservation standpoint this is going to be the most accurate way to play nes outside of real hardware and even then some real hardware won't test 100% completely perfectly and I will get into that in just a moment but the reality of the situation is yes it is going to be way more accurate on paper and in the synthetic test but in gameplay experiences you would have absolutely no idea that the results were changed whatsoever whether it is a game that came out in the NES life cycle or whether it is an aftermarket fan game like Celestia on the NES you would see no difference let's take a look at the current testing situation as far as the most recent ROM when this video was edited. At this point in time, there is one more test. It's going to be 129 versus 128, but the core is going to adhere to all 129 tests. These are all of the different behaviors that the hardware can exhibit, including behaviors that would not be used in any sort of retail game that Nintendo would not allow. And when you go through all the tests at this point in time, you're going to see the result here. 128 of 128 tests have completely passed on the most recent Mr. FPJ core. That means at least with this synthetic test you were 100% perfectly accurate compared to real Nintendo 64 hardware. But now the question is what hardware are we even talking about? Because this is a video that I haven't shown you guys yet where I go over and tear down a Sharp Twin Famicom with a Famicom Disk System emulator that basically loads up games via USB and not actually goes through the disk loading process in and of itself. And you are seeing Castlevania play right now on real Sharp Twin Famicom hardware. So you really have to think to yourself, what is quote unquote real hardware even referring to? Is that the first release of something like the Famicom in Japan? Is it the first release of the NES in North America? Or is it some sort of revision? Because don't forget, the console that leaves the marketplace when Nintendo Entertainment System goes to SNES is fundamentally different in its hardware configuration and manufacturing than the first NES that was put in a box and sold in North America back in the day. And that is going to be hardware-wise different than the first Famicom that would have been sold in Japan. So actually narrowing down what even is the quote-unquote real hardware can be absolutely difficult. You'd have to have a system in which there was ever only one hardware revision, the original one, and nothing changed all the way down the line. So as far as my Sharp Twin Famicom is concerned, I mentioned it in a previous video when I was actually playing around with the concept of the accuracy on the NES core, and I told you it didn't actually pass as many tests as my Mr. FPJ even did back then. As it currently stands, if I run that test I'm getting 125 of 128 passes. That means that the Sharp Twin Famicom even in itself is not quote unquote as accurate as other NES hardware. And I'll explain why in just a moment but remember the NES that's sitting under your television could be less accurate than the NES sitting underneath somebody else's television could be less accurate than the Mr. FPJ core. And I know that sounds crazy but what the reality is it really doesn't matter if they're more or less accurate because all of the games are going to play 100% identically because those failed tests come in functions that the NES never would have used back in the day. Because do remember, just because a console can do a thousand different functions, and I'm just throwing out numbers, doesn't mean that all thousand of them are going to be used. Sometimes maybe only 910 or 920 hit. 
And that's something that I think trips people up as well, these unofficial functions. Hardware can always do more than is stated in the software development kit. Sometimes things are added in during the development of the hardware, and then somebody like Nintendo decides maybe it's a little too difficult to deal with, maybe it doesn't get the right result. They basically just don't advertise that function to developers. Other times in software development kits and the documentations, they will say, you are not allowed to use the hardware in this manner. We will improve a game and make it for you if you do that. Why they do it, I do not know all the time, but the reality is these things like unofficial functions are known about. So right now you're watching gameplay and I'm not going to tell you whether this is from the core previous to the perfect test or the perfect test pass. The reason I'm not telling you that is because you'd have no idea. I could set these things with something like an automatic controller to put the exact same inputs in and it would be frame to frame accurate on this capture at least because those accuracy tests would not affect the gameplay portion. So that's one of the funny things about accuracy that I explained in the previous video and now I'm re-explaining that we do have the perfect pass is that as you the player you'd have no idea any of this was ever happening and this is basically just a pride moment going in and saying we can make the core as 100% accurate as possible to real hardware even if at the end of the day it isn't going to upgrade your gameplay experience. That's dedication to preservation, to coding, and to the cause and it is a lot of fun. Let's take a look at Accuracy Coin's website here and go over one very specific piece of text that I think is going to better explain this than even I can in voiceover. You're going to see that it explains everything that it is doing, the 129 tests that are currently available, and whether it prints pass or fail on the screen. But if you go up one line, and I will highlight it in just a moment, it says some tests might fail on hardware with a different revision. That means that some hardware can be less accurate than other hardware, even if you don't know that those exist. And that's what I mean when I say accuracy can be such a tricky concept. Why is my Sharp Twin Famicom less accurate than the Mr. FPJ Core? And why is my Sharp Twin Famicom less accurate than maybe an actual NES? I have absolutely no idea. I've never thought about it. I just put games in my Sharp Twin Famicom, I play them, and it's the exact experience I would expect when I sit down and play something like Super Mario Bros. 2. And that is why accuracy as a concept is both crucially important to the recreation of hardware in FPJ, and and also sometimes not important whatsoever. It just depends on how that accuracy can actually affect your gameplay experience as to whether or not you should give a damn in the first place. So this is amazing but also isn't going to change anything for you. I think honestly that's going to come to a lot of people's surprises that hardware can do things that you would never actually encounter in your day-to-day -day playing of it, whether it was back in the day when the NES was on store shelves, or whether it is in 2025 when you're playing a Mr. FPJ Core. Because you'll see here they're talking about the topmost row will print values from a certain memory address to another memory address, and that is an unofficial instruction. What that means is back in the day when you were making NES games, Nintendo was telling you, do not write or do not read to those memory addresses, that is not allowed. And as far as memory address spacing is concerned it is a very complicated thing basically it involves a lot of hexadecimal numbers and it's something that i don't really need to explain as far as how the behavior is just think of it this way your mom and dad told you not to do something and you better damn well listen to that but as you become an adult you get to make your own decisions and you say screw it i'm doing that that is what aftermarket games do when they use some of these unofficial instructions maybe they can get better performance from the nes maybe they can make things load faster or maybe they can get slight visual tricks that weren't available back in the day but Nintendo was looking back then and said don't do it and now Nintendo isn't looking anymore so developers of new games will use some of these unofficial instructions to be able to do things that maybe you've never seen before and previously in the core those were all supported as well so again when you actually think about this accuracy think of it like this you can measure it via machine and it definitely passed a lot more accurate and now succeeds in passing 100% of those tests but if you never saw this video if you never knew this was going on behind the scenes of the Mr. FPGA ecosphere, you would have no idea that it wasn't 100% accurate. And even today, if you download that newest core to get that 100% accuracy test score, you're still never going to notice a single difference in a game. But it is a monumental achievement. I want to stress that as well. And just as a side note, if I sound a little bit hoarse this week, it is seasonal allergy season in Chicago. All the leaves are falling off the trees, and the mold is definitely out in the air, and that absolutely destroys me. But it was a fun topic. Now that that test has been defeated it is dead 100% passing and we'll see you guys next time if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and i hope you guys enjoyed the video Bye bye